Matrix multiplications are beautiful things. Whenever the urge rises, I find myself performing thousands of them at a time. Every millisecond is a new adventure for me. And the output of my work is a bit weird sometimes, but at least my owner feeds me delicious electricity for it and lets me cool off when he feels like I need to take a break. Where, when, who let my graphics card write this intro for me? Matrixes are used for a lot of things, but I'm going to focus on linear transformations here. A linear transformation is pretty much a remapping from one coordinate system to another, and a matrix can be used to package multiple of these transformations into a single operation and a lot of other things, but we're getting ahead of ourselves here. Let's start off with a simple vector system. We may specify two dimensions, x and y, and any vector within this space may be described as some sum <laughs> of these two components. Now let's say we have these two vectors, u and v, and we want to describe this vector, a uv coordinate, in terms of x and y. How do we do this? Take this matrix, which describes u and v in terms of x and y, and multiply it by the original vector. Matrix multiplications are made up of many smaller operations known as dot products. In any product matrix A, B, for example, entry I, J is equal to the dot product of the index I row of A and the index J column of B, meaning that A, B will have the same numbers of rows as A and columns as B. Now, dot products are a lot of things, including useful, but we'll get into that later. In basic terms, the dot product of two ordered sets of the same size is the sum of the products of each index. You can't take the dot product of unlike sized arrays because that would be like trying to find the perimeter of a cylinder or convert meters to miles per hour. You'll leave a dimension hanging. Because of this, you can only multiply two matrices if the length of the row is of the first is equal to the length of the columns of the second. The best way to deal with problems like these is to not attempt any shortcuts because we're not GPUs and we'll get confused. For example, earlier, our output will be this column vector, which if you recall earlier in terms of x and y rather than u and v. So why does any of this work? Well, if we do this calculation the traditional way, we end up with these two ordered pairs, which are added together for the last step of the problem. Notice how both of these are portions of the old dot product mentioned earlier. In fact, you can further analyze a matrix multiplication to a bunch of actual multiplications parsed together by additions. Unlike the matrices themselves, these operations are commutative, so you can compute them in any order and run unlimited amounts of them in parallel, since you don't need to wait for one subprocess to finish. And this notion may be outstretched to greater dimensions with exponential potentially rising time complexity. This is great if you want to, say, project millions of three-dimensional points onto a two-dimensional plane dozens of times each second. Eight cores? Puny. Try 2,000. It doesn't even need to be bigger than your hands, and oh look, now you can watch this fucking triangle rotate in full screen for as long as you want. That is why this works.